Year after Pearl Harbor got bombed, the government launched the Top Secret Manhattan Project. So it was a, they purposely picked a dull sounding name so no one would guess that it was uh, this top secret purpose. Manhattan is not dull. Well, but it sounds like. Um, That's Times Square. All right, anyway. Broadway. We all know now that it was um, the purpose was to develop an atomic bomb, n nuclear bomb. So the, the government was looking for a place that had a lot of power, had a lot of water, and was far from population centers. And of course, they found it here in eastern Washington along the Columbia River. The people on the local farms and the communities of Hanford and White Bluffs didn't have much time to get out. And the government also evicted the people from the tiny town of Richland to turn it into a bedroom community for the Hanford Engineering Works. People came from all over the U.S. to work at Hanford, either um, because they were patriotic and wanted to do something for the war effort. You know, they guessed it was something to do with a weapon of some kind. They just had no idea exactly what. Uh, some people just needed the work. So they came from all over, as I said, on trains and buses and um, they I just imagine them getting off the trains and buses, thinking they're in the evergreen state of Washington and looking around <laughs> at Sagebrush. That happened to me when I moved here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, when I moved here in the early 90s, probably with a lot of the rest of you, my introduction to the Tri-Cities was to drive down George Washington Way and wonder why in July, maybe early August, somebody was standing in the shade of a phone post. <laughs> Take what you can get. <laughs> so, to think about what the dust was like back in, in those days. We did, they didn't have irrigation, all these trees weren't here, all the you know, grasses weren't there. And meanwhile, they were tearing up the desert because they built over 550 buildings on the Hanford site. This is in between March 1943 and August 1945. 550 buildings, not counting the barracks and mess halls, 400 miles of roadways, 150 miles of railroad tracks, a whole bunch of power lines and fences. Um, people lived in uh, weekend trailers, but they lived in them all the time, or barracks. Uh, later, they, they built these government homes in Richland, which some of us live in. And uh, the population of Richland grew from 300 to 25,000 people in just a couple of years. So think of the construction that was going on. So with the bunch grass and the sagebrush torn up, the wind would blow and nothing would hold down the dust. So uh, people didn't have air conditioning in those days. Maybe if you're really lucky, like a manager, you had swamp cooler or something, but most people didn't. So you either have windows open and let that dusty wind come in, or you close it to keep out the dust and just swelter inside. Um, I don't know if anybody's here has ever lived in a prefab house. I used to live in a prefab. With those, when they were first built, I understand that there was so much space around the windows and doors that even if you had the windows closed, the dust would come in anyway. So, um, I heard one old timer reminisce about dinner time at his house in those days, and he said, well, mother would keep the plates of food covered up with another plate, and then when it was time to eat, we would whip off the plates and eat fast before the dust could settle. <laughs> he said we didn't need to use salt and pepper because we just, you know, pretend the dust was salt. <laughs> uh, many people decided they couldn't live under those those conditions, so uh, they would. The government contractor at the time was E.I. Dupont, but some workers said, "No, it's just E. Dupont because I's leaving." <laughs> After a particularly bad dust storm, many workers would line up, collect their pay, and terminate their employment at Hanford. So those winds became known as termination winds. But other people decided to stay. The Hanford site stayed busy during the Cold War years, continuing their defense mission. And then in the late 80s, um, early 90s, that ended, and the mission changed to environmental cleanup. I moved here as a young scientist in uh, 1986. And I've spent pretty much my whole career here working in the environmental field. I'm a hydrogeologist. To study on wet rocks. Yes, a licensed <laughs> hydrogeologist. My license is current. So you can certify that my rocks yes, are wet. I can. <laughs> so we're helping to clean up and monitor the groundwater, among other things. Other contractors have dug up millions and millions of tons of contaminated dirt from near the river and moved it into an engineered landfill in the center of the site so it will not further contaminate the environment. And now when they're doing all that digging, they spray water on to keep the dust down, they have soil fixatives, 
But despite the best efforts, when the wind really blows hard, the dust rises. rises. When I was out at Hanford, what, like eight, nine years ago, they would still give out masks when you walked between buildings. It was really windy. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So this is a song that was written by a um, Washington songwriter named Linda Allen. We came here in 29 and settled near White Bluffs, dug a farm from sagebrush, Lord, those years were tough, but Uncle Sam bought our land to help the war to end. Soon our farms were blown away by termination winds. The desert wind can blow here till you've almost lost your mind. Sand will fill your mouth and nose and I'll stay your half line. Some folks dig in deeper and pray the storms will end. Others pack their bags. 